Hello, and welcome to why observability in the public cloud is critical to ensure business resiliency on theCUBE. I'm Bob LaLiberté, Principal Analyst with theCUBE Research, and today we're going to dive into why observability is so critical to ensure business resilience, especially with all the evolving digital landscape that we have, the rapid rise of AI capabilities, and we'll explore why Dynatrace and Microsoft have teamed up to help address all of those challenges. Now, to help me unpack this, let me welcome to the show Jay Snyder, Senior VP, Global Alliances and Partners from Dynatrace, and Priscilla Laham, VP, ISV Partnerships, Americas for Microsoft. Hello. Hello Great Priscilla, hello Jay. Hello. All right. So, I guess with no further ado, why don't we get right into it? And Jay, I wanted to address the first question to you. Sure. Why is observability necessary to ensure business resiliency and empower enterprises to manage these increasingly dynamic cloud environments more effectively? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. One that I get asked often by my partners and customers. You know, I always like to set the stage. I, I've been in the industry for over 30 years and I distinctly remember when cloud came on the scene. It wasn't long before cloud was providing a comprehensive set of services across every sector to everyone. And what I think is amazing and almost a little bit crazy is it's not slowing down. In fact, I feel like it's speeding up. Uh, the rate of change is, is just dizzying, right? It's, it's showing no signs of stopping. And if you want to enable that type of change, that pace, cloud continues to be front and center as the major enabler for many, if not most of the transformations businesses are undertaking. You know, it's funny, I recently did an interview and I was clear, I truly believe it's not the big that will eat the small, but it's the fast that will eat the slow. And this is exactly why businesses today continue to invest heavily and aggressively in cloud and often have hybrids with their applications and data all over the place. Infrastructure can be living anywhere at any time. So cloud continues to prove almost after two decades to be the key enabler in allowing companies to drive innovation, reduce operating costs and provide business resilience. Then you layer in AI, and now you can extract even more value from those investments by harnessing its value, its major value point, which is data. And you're able to do this like never before. So if you've got cloud still ramping, expectations at an all time high to go faster, there's no way to keep up with it manually. That is where observability has moved from very relevant to mission critical. Lost hours or days might not just cost millions of dollars, they might determine if you win or lose a market. Observability allows enterprises to tap into the true power of hybrid cloud safely and at pace. And when I say safely, I'm talking about application security built right into the platform to ensure as you build, deploy, and iterate, you are not exposed or will be exposed to the myriads of vulnerabilities that exist today. To me, it's just a simple math equation. When you add cloud, plus observability, it equals business outcomes through digital transformation at pace and in the most secure way possible. This is what we mean when we talk about resilient businesses, one that can iterate, operate, and innovate at light speed anywhere with the knowledge to know that what you are doing, where you are doing it, and when something goes wrong, it's fixed in seconds. Yeah, I think that's perfect. That's a great example. You know, especially when you think about the dynamic nature of the cloud, what's happening, so that ability to have that observability into it so you can manage it effectively uh, and efficiently because obviously organizations aren't spending more on resources so they have to make the investments in the tools to be able to provide that information and those insights into those environments. Uh, I want to switch over to Priscilla now and talk to you about you know, what specific benefits do your Azure customers gain from implementing an observability, excuse me, observability platform like Dynatrace. Yeah, so observability is essential as Jay said. So first of all, thank you for the invitation. It's uh, great to be here uh, with the audience. So as Jay mentioned, uh, I see ob observability as mission critical. So it's really mission critical in a world where you have like the cloud and all the benefits that the enterprise really wants from, from the cloud improving efficiency, improving adaptability, flexibility, accelerating the innovation, all these benefits. 
the companies they need uh, really to deliver real-time visibility to their system. So re reliability of the system is even more important. So observability comes to this scenario to help companies to improve on that, to monitor, to prevent issues before get to the to the users, uh, to prevent from threats. We are in a very digital connected world, so threats are happening more and uh, faster, uh, advancing faster. So I see observability as mission critical. I think Jay said that, and I totally agree on the mission critical because it's really to take the benefit of the cloud environment you need to monitor, you need to prevent, you need to adapt, and you need to take uh, better and informed decisions. So with the advanced analytics that we see and anomaly detection uh, that we have on Dynatrace uh, observability uh, platform, you can have like this benefit. So I, I see as essential for, for the enterprises. Yeah, absolutely, and I, and I like what you were saying about those real-time insights, right? That's so critical in the dynamic environments that we have today. There's no time for information to be collected, gathered, brought back somewhere, analyzed, and at a later time provide that, that insight. So having it happen in real time is, as you mentioned, especially for mission-critical environments, is a must-have in these highly dynamic and distributed environments. So I'll turn back to you, Jay, to see maybe if you could share a specific example of how you see Dynatrace helping customers enhance their cloud environments, you know, the, the entire journey that they have, and also to help them ensure business continuity. I'm going to play off of what Priscilla said, because she talked about real-time insights, and Bob, you just called it out again, you know, yeah. the ability to have that data at your fingertips to make quick decisions. You know, I know Priscilla a bit. My assumption is she's probably like me, a multi-million air flyer on either one or multiple airlines. And I think we all understand the pain associated when things don't go right, when you're on a long travel trip or even a short trip that gets turns into a long travel trip. So I'm going to give you a customer example that hits home for me, certainly, and probably many of you listening. Um, and it's about what this customer was able to achieve when they partnered with us in the observability space. The customer is Aeroporti di Roma, or ADR. Um, it's the airport in Rome. And we partnered with them to achieve three major outcomes. One was unparalleled travel experience. The second was improved operational efficiency. And the third was faster vulnerability detection. So let's start with leveraging AI-powered answers to help ADR automatically uncover the root cause of bottlenecks in critical applications that were running all over the world because they had a hybrid diverse cloud environment so that the teams can continuously optimize airport experiences. This capability has enabled ADR to keep travelers flowing through its airports quickly and efficiently, including processing 90% of travelers through security in three minutes. And for those who travel, if you can imagine that, and then enabling functional arrivals and departures from more than 99% of daily flights, also imagine that, and guaranteeing that 13 million bags reach more than 200 destinations each year. This was all done through driving efficiency with AI. Second, we seamlessly integrated with ADR's existing IT service management solution, so it now automatically creates tickets when it discovers problems and instantly routes them to the right team within ADR along with the precise root cause analysis to facilitate proactive resolution. This has reduced time spent triaging issues by 70%. So coming back to what Priscilla just said about real-time availability of data, 70% reduction. We know as humans what that 70% means, longer lines, longer delays, right? So as a multi-million flyer myself, this feels like a huge win for us. In fact, my daughter avoids a specific city in the U.S. just because she won't fly there because every time she does, she gets a delay. And then finally, Dynatrace alerts ADR to any new security vulnerabilities in its environments while automatically prioritizing them based on the risk to the airport systems and travelers, which I think is absolutely unbelievable. And they're often able to resolve them within minimal airport disruption. For many of these instances, ADR has been able to use AI capabilities to create automated workflows that enable applications to self-heal without the need for any human intervention. So what does this all mean, right? It sounds great, it's a lot of tech talk, it's a lot of what we do working in partnership with Microsoft around the cloud and AI, but what does it really mean? It means that ADR 
was recently rated the best airport in Europe with over 40 million passengers by the Airport Council International. And they received a five-star airport rating from Skytrax, making them only the second European airport to achieve this rating. So you think about all the technology stuff we just discussed, Bob, but at the end, it's about the business impact and business outcome. And I think the proof is in the pudding with the results that ADR achieved. Yeah, that's really an impressive uh, story that you just told. And it's always great, I think, for any organization, not just airports, if you're able to increase your operational efficiency, you're able to deliver enhanced experiences, and you're able to mitigate risk through security, that's something that any organization is going to want to have as an outcome. So it's great yeah. to hear that as you're partnering up, that you're having real customers delivering and getting real value from the solutions and having a, an impact on their overall business. So that's that's a fantastic, fantastic yeah, I love. I love that story because, again, for me as a traveler, it feels so real, yeah. right? Because you know exactly when what I described isn't happening because we've all been on the other side of that, right? So it's an, it's an incredibly close to home experience. Yeah, absolutely. And so I wanted to go back to you, Priscilla. It's, it's hard to have any conversation these days without talking about AI, right? It's just, it's out there. It's been out there for a while now. It's on the, the tip of everyone's tongue. Everyone wants to talk about it. And it's obviously evolving incredibly fast. So, you know, I was wondering from your perspective how it's reshaping how enterprises are approaching the cloud and what are some of the things that they should consider to make sure that they're staying competitive relative to, to others in their space? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a great question. I think like it's the topic of the moment. Yeah. So customers are embracing AI even faster. And for sure, cloud is like a, a basics uh, for all the evolution and all the innovation you can get from AI. So we are seeing like a, a big wave of like adoption, testing, piloting, and executing. So we have like a lot of customers already taking the ROI, the return on investment for the for the AI that uh, they are the, the way that they are using AI. But I like to say that uh, on the AI discussion, there are there is a lot of excitement with the technology. But uh, we uh, we say to our customers that you have to have like a business transformation first mindset. So technology is an enabler for your business transformation. So to have a clarity on what is needed for your business to have like an advantage in the market is crucial. So this is like a, usually the major discussion we have with the customers because we want to generate value from AI. So this is like the intention. And, uh, and when I look today, I think like the major, the major areas of uh, of evolution is really reshaping business process because there was a, a big opportunity on business transformation on that, creating uh, or improving the employee efficiency. And it's interesting because we have like a data, 75% uh, of like the employees uh, in the enterprise are already using uh, Copilot. And Copilot is helping them to save 30 minutes per day. If you think on 30 minutes per day, it's 10 hours on a month basis. So basically you can save time on tasks and have time for innovation, for creativity, for thinking on the business. So it's really like uh, delivering on our promise and our belief that uh, the AI will expand the, the human capacity and it's happening on our customers. So I think it's a very exciting moment and uh, we, it's important on this environment to have like the right uh, partnerships. So with Dynatrace, we have this partnership. We just launched the Dave's Copilot. So it's like something very interesting and helping and to bringing AI insights to the reality. So I, I think like the partnerships and f having the business force mindset for me are the two crucial ones. No, I think that's great. And I love, I love to hear about the partnership because it's difficult for any one company to do it all. So those tight partnerships, those ecosystems that are required. I also really liked hearing you talk about the process change and also somewhat of the cultural change, right? It's people, process, and technology. And a lot of times the technology will come first and then it takes a little bit longer. So the fact that organizations can get started culturally and get them used to and comfortable with AI through Copilot 
and then be able to expand and build on that so that they're used to seeing the benefit and eagerly anticipating in other areas how they can leverage it. I think that's a great way to transition and get organizations. But like you said, the most important part is that business has to have that mindset that they are going to be transforming and they are going to be shifting. So those were some, yes. those are some great insights. Um, switch it now, since we did bring up ecosystems and partnerships, Jay, why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, how your partnership with Microsoft delivers um, more significant customer outcomes and value in a cloud first AI driven world. We'll tie all those together, the partnership yeah. and AI. <laughs> Happy to. Can I make, I'm going to just make one comment on what Free said, because it really yeah. touched home for me on the behavioral change. I, I'm, I'll just admit, you know, AI is something that was a little bit foreign to me a few months ago, and I did exactly what she described. Uh, I had to do something. I used Copilot. It was amazing experience and almost shockingly amazing. And since that time, I now find myself probably using Copilot two or three times a day. And it's been an incredible on ramp, if you will, for someone who's been in the industry 32 years to get very comfortable with the power of AI. So uh, completely agree on that topic. But let's get back to the question at hand, right? Uh, the partnership with Microsoft. I, I think it's important to start with stating that when you deliver integrated high value solutions together, it doesn't just happen. It takes us collectively a lot of time and focus to really zero on, on what we want to do and how we want to do it. I would say that our collective product teams meet regularly we prioritize a bunch of solutions and integrations that we want to tackle. We put them all on a roadmap and then we further refine and get feedback from our own teams, our customers on how they're going to have impact and outcome, outsized impact in the market to ensure that everything we are designing happens from the customer back. Really meaning that it has customer impact and business value. I think the table stakes for us, we're ensuring that our platform is Azure na native enabled and that we're utilizing the Azure Open AI services to enhance our offerings and deliver improved customer experience. I said it's all about the customer. I know Pre thinks it's all about the customer. And the wonderful thing in working with Microsoft is in general, we feel the exact same way. So we're always designing from the customer back. I would say through these deep technical integrations, we're able to help customers onboard faster, achieve faster time to value. They gain a unified view basically a 365 degree view of their entire Azure estate, which is incredibly valuable. It might sound simple or straightforward, but we spoke earlier about the pace of change and the complexities that exist in this modern world. These capabilities are vital and can often separate those companies who win their market and those who do not, some that potentially do not even exist. So it's not just about being first to market, but about how you monetize that gold of today, which is the data. And in this AI and automation driven world, we collectively can enhance and enrich that data being generated in the cloud, allowing our customers to benefit, to make real time business decisions, leveraging Dynatasis platform capabilities like Davis AI and Grail and the data lake house. So all your data in one place, which means you have the ability to predict, analyze, pivot as needed and ultimately transform to drive the most efficient and effective business outcomes. So I'd say in summary, Bob, that's, that's how we're working together. It's a couple of minutes. Again, it sounds simple, but I can tell you behind the scenes, there's a tremendous amount of work that goes into the technology roadmap and the collaboration that we put forward to make sure, again, always designing from the customer back. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, and it sounds great. And I understand that the analogy, I think, is the duck, right? On the surface, it looks like it's swimming along smoothly and underneath it's exactly. going furiously behind the scenes to make sure everything works effectively. It's the perfect analogy, actually. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Well, it's great to hear. Uh, I know we're, we're running a little bit short on time, so I wanted to wrap up with the last question around how both of you see the future of this partnership evolving to make sure that you're, you're meeting those changing needs of your enterprise customers. So uh, we'll start with Priscilla. Yeah, so if you don't mind, I want to comment on one of the points of yeah. Jade because data is really important. So some uh, big trends on AI, uh, one of them it is like data protection and security. Yeah. So it's a big bar barrier for AI adoption. So we need to make sure enterprise address these concerns, implementing a robust data protection measure and uh, making sure ensuring the transparency on the AI systems and AI models. So I think like uh, Jay, you, are, you were spot on on that. 
because it's really an important one for us. In terms of like the partnership, so I think like this partnership, the way that we look on the customer demands and customer needs, it's it's improving, it's growing, and uh, it's more complex what they need from us. So we see the partnership with uh, Dynatrace as very strategic for us. And uh, as we have like the growth of, of cloud and AI uh, in the marketplace with the enterprises, uh, observability really becomes mission critical for everyone. And uh, we will keep working. We have like a very deep technical uh, joint work to help customers on what they need and that these needs are growing and changing uh, over time. So it's a very strategic partnership for Microsoft. And uh, I would say it's the only way to deliver on customer expectations is with partnerships like Dynatrace. Excellent, great. Jay, do you want to add anything to that? I should have recorded that myself and used those sound bites. Um, I probably will find that. I, I'm probably going to sound slightly redundant, but so honestly, I'm not sure I see the strategic partnership evolving as much as I see the technology evolving, because as Pre said, I think we have a really wonderful relationship today. It's incredibly grounded in customer first mentality. We're aligned on the product side, on the marketing side, and on the go-to-market side, and how we both want to help our customers. The tech will keep moving at light speed, and we'll continue to prioritize and collaborate as it does. I'm confident the integration will continue to evolve. Our solutions will become smarter, more automated, and certainly more AI driven. But our commitment and approach will remain steadfast on customer. What I love is we both spend a lot of time with our customers through advisory boards, events, and other settings to get real-time feedback on where we might be falling short and where they think the next wave of te technology can help them deliver. So collectively, we're consuming all that information and that feeds into our roadmap, which keeps us honest. Um, keeps us on our toes and definitely grounded in the right areas for the partnership. But like Pre stated, it's about empowering our customers to maximize the value of the ecosystem to allow our customers to adopt modern technologies faster. You got to remember what I said earlier. It's the fast that will lead the slow. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, I can't thank both of you enough. This has been an uh, incredibly engaging conversation. Tons of great information about the partnership, about the technology, how you're helping and enabling your enterprise customers, and most importantly, those real business value outcomes that they're deriving from leveraging the combined technologies. So thank you, uh, Priscilla and Jay, for joining me today. Thank you. Great to be here. Thank you. Yeah. And I want to thank all of you for watching. Uh, why observability in the public cloud is critical to ensure business resiliency on the Cube. For more information on Dynatrace and Microsoft solutions, please visit their websites.